Let's talk Rensport, an EGS exclusive beta only accessed simulator that's catering to the esports and competitive crowd. These results are from the closed beta, and if I have newer content, newer results, I'll have a link up in the top right now showing you those. But first, a shout out to my patrons and also super likes on YouTube for my last videos. Thank you for your support. This is what's going to enable new hardware content on this channel. Um, also, shout out to Graham, who has uh, re reached out for a request of consultation, which you can find on my website. He got into sim racing with Gran Turismo and PlayStation, and now he wants to step up to iRacing and a set of course of Competizione. And I helped him spec out a new PC, something that's brand new to him. Uh, and those funds go directly into getting new hardware. So if any of you are interested in this and need some help, reach out, I can do that for you. And you can support the channel at the same time. Okay, now let's get into the Ren Sport specifications. Here is the test system that I've set up uh, and the CPUs. You'll notice with the CPUs, I've dropped the Ryzen 2700. I've retired it from the program. Quite frankly, I didn't want to update that motherboard and everything to Windows 11. So in its place, I've got a Ryzen 3600. The boost clocks for AM5 were about 150 megahertz less than what I anticipated. I didn't have time to resolve it, so just know that moving forward. Nothing's changed from my previous videos with my motherboard selection or RAM usage. And here's the other hardware I'd used for this testing, including a 4080 Super, as well as the build, the Rensport Beta 185. Uh, after I collected the results, it went to 188. So already these results are old, but it's a moving target, it's beta. You gotta jump in to swim. Now it's important to know that Rensport does not natively support triple screen. Yes, I do have it running in the background, but that's not real triple screen. It's not using three different projections for those viewports. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out this video. I talk about it in iRacing, which has deployed the ability to change screen angles and point of view. This matters for accurate rendering. Instead, Rensport allows you to use something called projection correction, basically inversing the fisheye perspective that is generated when you have a single viewpoint. The best way to showcase this is with a, a rear camera behind the cockpit where you can see the perspective that I have. Up top, no correction. This is the fisheye issue. Underneath, projection correction inversing that, reversing that, however you want to phrase it. I actually don't know the algorithms that are involved, but it's something to do with the Unreal Engine. From this far back, it actually looks like a good solution. And here's an example of what it looks like when you change it from zero projection correction, which goes all the way up to 100, but I think I used about 70 in this example. Notice how it zooms in on the center, and that's the problem it creates image distortion. It blurs the center monitor in order to make the left and right monitors more clear. And I think that's a silly compromise to make. You spend 90 something percent of your time looking straight in front of you. I want that to be clear. So you just hit pause at any point right now and you can just compare the right clarity to the left blurriness. And when you're on the track with projection correction, I just found it hard to, find the apex to find the road, it's more difficult to drive. So today's testing is just with single monitor widescreen resolutions and 1080p, because that's where we're going to see the biggest difference between CPUs. Okay, here's the first bar graph. It's at 1080p, we're at SPA using a 4080 Super. I have the graphics set to high with DLSS at quality. And you're gonna be like, hey, why are you doing that? Well, we have to put in some kind of anti-aliasing and honestly, they all look like rubbish to me. DLSS gives you a performance advantage and also makes it look better. At least that's my experience with the beta settings so far. Leading the way is the Intel 13700K with 176.6 FPS and it has a 6.7% lead over the 7800X3D. Next is the i5-12600K which has a slight lead over the 5800X3D. This is surprising to see. In a lot of the other simulators I've tested, uh, the X3Ds tend to shine, but not here in the beta. 
The Ryzen 5 7600X lags behind the 7800X 3D by 10%. But keep in mind, the 7800X 3D has eight cores versus the six cores for the 7600X. And I've noticed that the utilization across the cores is much higher than other simulators that I've tested. If you average out the CPU utilization across all cores, this is what it looks like. The light blue represents the core load, while the darker blue is the total thread load. We can somewhat see a grouping here between the eight core processors versus the six core processors, while the old 9700K is sweating at the bottom. This is in contrast to a simulator like iRacing where only two, three cores are going to be really taxed. So the overall averages would be lower. For example, this is from a few seasons ago, but it clearly shows how different the CPU utilization is. This is iRacing, Daytona, 3080 Ti, and a very intense CPU benchmark. Now, this was also performed on Windows 10, so it's not the same as the Windows 11 we're seeing with uh, Rensport and the Unreal Engine, but there are stark differences between these processors and how the utilization is represented. All right, let's flip back to Rensport, and here we're showing VRAM usage in the lighter yellow and GPU busy in the darker yellow. We're seeing, well, I'm using the same video card, so the usage is basically, the, the VRAM usage is basically the same. A small anomaly with the 5800X 3D. But when we look at the GPU busy, this is curious. Just as a reminder, GPU busy represents the percentage of time during every frame that's created that the GPU is doing meaningful work. So in the case of the 13700K, 99% of the time the frame is being generated, the video card is busy. Now, the order of these CPUs is a little jumbled up. Sorry about that. However, I find it interesting that for the 7800X 3D, the 13700K, even the 5800X 3D, we're seeing high above 95% utilization. This is suggesting that if we had a faster card in here, we would see better performance. But notice in green, I've added the wattage. How much power is the graphics card consuming? I have the power limits boosted on the 4080 Super, so it can consume up to 400 watts at peak usage, but when we see peak usage, it's only around 200. That's a bit weird. Yes, there is less VRAM being used, and that definitely affects power consumption, but I think we're seeing a bit of a misleading uh, result here with GPU Busy, that we can't take it at face value like we have previously. So as I said earlier, I'm not testing triple 1080p resolution because Rensport does not properly support that yet. But what I can do is disable one of my monitors and set up Nvidia Surround to emulate a dual resolution. For example, 5120 by 1440, which is DQHD. There's lots of options out there for those. LG, Asus, AOC, Samsung. And I benched dual 4K. Um, which basically is just the Odyssey Neo G9 from Samsung. I can do those resolutions. Unfortunately, Rensport really doesn't like to run windowed mode. So I was trying to do 3440 by 1440, um, which is a common resolution for widescreen, but I just it worked some of the time and other times it didn't. And I just had to give up on that. For whatever reason, the AM4 platform did let me test at this resolution windowed and Rensport didn't automatically push it into full screen. So I can share these results. And this is an interesting resolution. So I'm kind of disappointed I, I don't have uh, more. What we see is the 5800 X3D's lead significantly diminish. It had about a 20% lead over the 5600 at 1080p, but at this resolution that gets cut in half. It only has a 9.6% lead over the 5600. So that's a very interesting turning point, but I'll have to wait for a future build in order to test again at this resolution. Okay, so with dual 1440p, we have dramatically increased the resolution here from 2.1 million at regular HD to now 7.4 million pixels. This is a big jump and definitely looks like a GPU bottleneck. There's only a few percentage point differences between the top five processors. 
but it's interesting to see that both X3D processors fall behind a little bit here, where at 1080p they were doing pretty good, at this resolution, the 12600K and the 7600K, both of which are six core processors, they actually outperform here. Maybe in this scenario, the Unreal Engine just prefers a faster CPU clock. Switching now to the sus GPU busy chart, we see a small increase in VRAM usage now to about 50%. And most of the processors are up at 99%, 98% GPU busy. But the power consumption has increased by what, 20, 25%? So clearly at this resolution, the GPU is doing more work. The graphics card is doing more, it's consuming more power, it has to be. But the percentages are kind of the same for the 13700K and the 7800X3D. But yes, the GPU busy has increased for the 5600 and the 9700K as we would expect, considering that we are definitely looking at uh, a higher resolution that's demanding on that 4080 Super. And just to share the numbers because I have them, here's the CPU load chart. And yes, there is actually a noticeable difference across the board. The CPU is not being as heavily utilized as it was at 1080p. When we increase the resolution to dual 4K, well, yes, we should not be surprised to see this chart really flatten out. The 4080 Super is at its limit. There's only about a 6% difference between the fastest processor, the 13700K, and the slowest, the 3600 Ryzen processor. Once again, there is no advantage to that X3D cache. And this is actually something we've seen before. For example, a set of Corsa. I did some testing with Low Fuel Motorsports League. This was Nordschleife surround 4K, so triple 4K. And at that huge GPU load, we actually saw the X3D processors underperform. So this is a small blemish and it's just a few percentage. You'll never notice the difference, but it appears to be measurable and in different simulators. So when Rensport brings in uh, proper triple 4K support, I wonder if we're gonna see this, these X3D cache chips fall farther down the list. There are no surprises with the GPU busy chart and the percentage of CPU load also decreases once again. And one last thing for the benchmark geeks out there, I continue to use PresentMon. I'm trying to find a use case for this. And here's an example of comparing the 13700K at dual 4K to 1080p. Unlike iRacing, CPU weight does increase when we increase the resolution. This is what we are expecting to happen because we know the GPU is super busy with work. But this tool also shows that our GPU weight increases. Okay, and then if we look at GPU latency and compare that to GPU busy, there's a pretty big discrepancy here. And I don't know what that means yet, but I just wanted to share some of my results. So I'm looking forward to testing more Rensport in the future um, with not only my GPUs, but with later releases. I I think it's gonna go open beta probably this summer, so that's pretty exciting. And if you're looking to support this channel, I really appreciate the super likes. Check out my Patreon, and if you want some personal advice on how to upgrade your computer um, or buy a whole new one, you can contact me through my website, which is uh, benchmarkodysseys.com. Thanks for watching.